Please join us in prayer. Yeah, thank you for your set of our spirit. Thank you for your holy Shabbat. We ask that you come within our presence, um, send your set of our spirit, and lead us into all truth as you always do. Um, we ask that everyone is blessed by today's message and that everyone has a testimony about today's message and is able to share that testimony and everybody continues to grow in the knowledge of who we are and who you called us to be. All these things we ask in your son's name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please stand for the blowing of the shofars. We will start with the songs. Please, uh, please send in your song request. Uh, 99. Okay. Yah shall reign. Peoples tremble. He is enthroned on the caravan. The earth shakes. Yah is great in Zion, and he is high above all the peoples. They praise your name, great and awesome. It is set apart, and the strength of the sovereign shall love right ruling. You yourself shall establish straightness. You shall execute right ruling and righteousness in Yaakov. Exalt Yah our Elohim and bow yourselves at his footstool. He is set apart. Moshe and Aharon are, were among his priests. And Shemuel was among those calling upon his name. They called upon Yah and he answered them. He spoke to them in the column of the cloud. They guarded his witnesses and the law he gave them. You answered them, O Yah our Elohim. You were a forgiving El to them, though you took vengeance on their deeds. Exalt Yah our Elohim and bow down towards his set apart mountain, for Yah our Elohim is set apart. Hallelujah. Psalm 100. Raise a shout for Yah, all the earth. Serve Yah with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that Yah, he is Elohim. He has made us and we are his, his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name, for Yah is good. His loving commitment is everlasting, and it's true through all generations. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalm 7. O oh, Yah, my Elohim, in you I have taken refuge. Save me from all my pursuers and deliver me, lest they tear at my throat like a lion, rending in pieces with no one to deliver. O oh, Yah, my Elohim, if I have done this, if there is unrighteousness in my hands, if I have done evil to him who was at peace with me, or have plundered my enemy without cause. Let the enemy pursue me and overtake my being, and trample my life to the ground, and lay my esteem in the dust. Salah. Arise, O Yah, in your displeasure. Lift yourself up against the rage of my adversaries, and awake from me. You shall command judgment, and let the congregations of the people gather about you. 
and over them reign on, return on high. Yah judges the peoples. Judge me, O Yah, according to my righteousness and according to my integrity within me. Please let the evil of the wrong be ended and establish the righteous. For the righteous Allahim is a trier of hearts and kidneys. My shield is upon Allahim, who saves the upright in heart. Allahim is a righteous judge, and El is enraged every day. If one does not repent, he sharpens his sword, he bends his bow and makes it ready, and he has prepared himself for instruments of death. He prepared for himself instruments of death. He makes his arrows hot for pursuers. See, he who is bound with wickedness and has conceived trouble and brought forth falsehood. He has made a pit and dug it out and falls into the ditch he made. His trouble returns upon his own head, and his wrongdoing comes down to the top of his head. I give thanks to Yah according to his righteousness, and praise the name of Yah Most High. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalm 55. Psalm 55. Give ear to my prayer, O Elohim, and do not hide yourself from my plea. Give heed to me and answer me. I wander and moan in my complaint. Because of the noise of the enemy, because of the outcry of the wrong. For they bring down wickedness upon me, and in wrath they hate me. My heart is pain within me, and the frights of death have fallen upon me. Fear and trembling have come upon me, and shuddering covers me. And I said, Who would give me wings like a dove? I would fly away and be at rest. See, I would wander far off. I would lodge in the wilderness, Salah. I would hasten my escape from the raging wind and storm. Confuse, O Yah, divide their tongues, for I saw violence and strife in the city. Day and night they go in, they go around it on its walls. Wickedness and trouble are also in the midst of it. Covetings are in its midst. Oppression and deceit do not vanish from its streets. It is not an enemy who reproaches me. That I can bear. Nor one who hates me, who is making himself great against me. Then I could hide from him. But it was you. A man my equal, my companion, and my friend. We took sweet counsel together. We walked to the house of Elohim in the throne. Let death come upon them. Let them go down into Sheol alive, for evil is in their dwellings, in their midst. I, I call upon Elohim, and Elohim saves me, and Yah saves me. Evening and morning, and at noon, I complain and moan, and he hears my voice. He has redeemed my life in peace from the battle against me, for there were many against me. El, even who, he who sits in thrones from the vault, does hear and afflict them, Salah. Those with whom there are no changes, those who do not fear Yah, are Allahim. He has put forth his hands against those who were at peace with him. He has broken his covenant. His mouth was smoother than curds, yet in his heart is fighting. His words were softer than oil, but they are drawn swords. Hmm. Cast your burden on Yah and let him sustain you. He never allows the righteous to be shaken. For you, O Elohim, do bring them down to the pit of destruction. Men of blood and deceit do not reach half their days. But I, I trust in you. Hallelujah. 97. Psalm 97. These are very encouraging. Yah shall reign. The earth rejoices. Many isles are glad. Clouds and darkness all around him. Righteousness and right ruling are the foundation of his throne. Fire goes before him and burns up his adversaries round about. His lightnings shall light the world. The earth shall see and tremble. The mountains shall melt like wax before the face of Yah, before the face of the master of all the earth. The heavens shall declare his righteousness, and all the people shall see his esteem. All are put to shame who serve to carved images. Those boasting of matters of nothing Bow yourselves to him, all you mighty ones. Zion shall hear and be glad, and the daughters of Yehuda rejoice because of your right rulings, O Yah. For you, Yah, are the most high over all the earth. You shall be greatly exalted over all mighty ones. You who love eat Yah hate evil. He guards the lives of his lovingly committed ones. He delivers them out of the hand of the wrong. Light is sown for the righteous, and gladness for the upright in heart. Rejoice in Yah, you righteous, and give thanks at the remembrance of his set of partners. Hallelujah. Last short one, 67. Psalm 67. Allahim does favor us and bless us, cause his face to shine upon us. Selah. For your ways to be known on earth, your deliverance among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O Allahim. 
Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the people uprightly and lead the nations on earth. Salah. Let the peoples praise you, O Allahim. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the earth give her increase. Allahim, our own Allahim, blesses us. Allahim blesses us. And all the ends of the earth fear him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We will now transition into testimonies. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom. We have a testimony. Yeah, I made food, and food is delicious at times, and um, it's so very good. It be so good. Um, my testimony is that I made it safely today. I praise y'all for traveling mercies. Praise him for our cups that runneth over. Um. <laughs> Praise him that I made it through my second week of teaching. Um, Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Our cups running. Oh, no. <laughs> I was thinking we got to laugh. We're not actors. So, if you push with the trailer. And no, I did not do that. I'm standing on camera. Okay. Thank it wasn't me. <laughs> um, I just want to thank y'all for. Reaching 45 years ago. Hallelujah! I got great gifts and I got to spend time with friends and I got some cool, cool things. I praise you after that. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Life. Oh my goodness. I would just like to thank Shante. <laughs> For being shy. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Chanel would like to thank y'all for continued grace and mercy. She would like to thank him for continuing to answer prayers and for even telling us no when we need it. She also thanks y'all for finally getting internet access at home and for her grandmother getting the help and services that she needs. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, I'm gonna try and make this short. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody is getting short, so we're we'll trying to make this really short. I just want to praise y'all for every single person I see. Why? Hallelujah. Those who are in house and those who are joining us via technology, I just want to praise y'all for everyone. We had a beautiful, beautiful piece of trumpet. Hallelujah. This past week, we had celebration, birthday celebration, back to back. Um, I just want to praise y'all. I also want to thank you. With um everything that we did the whole day was just so peaceful. I just I had time to reflect on what Yah is doing with us at CY. I'm so happy that he's leading us. <laughs> I'm so happy that Yah is our moray. Okay, I said it. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. I said it. Yah is our moray here at CY. 
And so I just love the way he's teaching each and every one of us, you know, in our personal study. And so when we get together, we see what he's been doing in our lives. And so we get to share. And we, we're all blessed when we get together. The second testimony I have, you know, I have to do it in threes. <laughs> it's just I want to praise you all for the beautiful people that I meet here in Georgia. Beautiful experience and all the blessings like he's rolled out a red carpet for me. That's I've right. The gym five minutes down the street. That's right. And all the good things that are happening in my life. And I just want to praise him for that. And the third one, I want to thank him for safe travels, traveling back and forth on the highway. I get back on the highway in a couple of days, in about a week or so, and I head back to Maryland and see my grandkids. I just want to thank him in advance for safe travels. Hallelujah. I just want to thank y'all for Shabbat. I don't know about you. I don't yeah. know about the week you have, but I praise Yah for a day of rest. Hallelujah. Oh, the sun just greeted me this morning. I said, thank you, Yah. Then there was a little raindrop on my car window. I said, Thank you, y'all. That's what I got here. Say, I said, thank you, y'all. And I saw my TY family in house and online. I said, thank you, y'all. There's just so much to be grateful for the Shabbat. Um, just simply because of Shabbat. And y'all said, part this day for us for rest and restoration. Hallelujah. And for refreshing. I also like to thank y'all for even. Yeah. He's so great. I have all these little arts and crafts ideas, and he's just like, all right, I'll help you. And we literally <laughs> have super glue stuff to our fingers and tape and paper cuts and all this other stuff, and he's just like, all right, I'll, I'll help you. He didn't want to, clearly, but he did anyway. And I thank y'all for that. I also think I also received a gift in the mail this week. And it came anonymously. So I would like to thank that person from the bottom of my heart. It was what we needed and it was what we wanted. It was both a want and a need. And I've been trying to find all week who this person is. And I would just like to say thank you. <laughs> I feel like there's someone here who wants to not claim sending it. Don't know. But in my heart. I feel like this person is in this. It's here right now. <laughs> and I just want to say thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all yeah, just made me laugh so hard today. And I almost forgot. i like to thank y'all for Chanel. Chanel was teased up with us all throughout the feast of trumpets um, via internet and technology and everything. And technology was acting up that day. We could have easily got frustrated, but she didn't, and we did not, and we were able to celebrate feast of trumpets together. And she also gave us a little treat and had us say hi to Noah. So hi, Noah. Hey, and hi, hi, Chanel. It was great spending the day with you, and it was just an awesome day from beginning to end. The laughter, the scripture, the knowledge that we learn, the celebrating of a new month, we went over that study, um, just learning and learning more and applying what we learned at TY on Shabbat, even, you know, in the feast days and every day. So it was just great spending time with people who not only love Yah, but love to learn. You'll be shocked how people don't like to learn. Um, so it's great having a family that is fun, intellectual, connected to y'all. It's a blessing, and trust me, lots of people don't have that. So I just want to thank y'all for that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Yes. That's yes. correct. And, and it depends. Oh, that was awesome. Just trying to stop and reflect and to give your praise. So now we transition into praise and worship. Hallelujah. However you do it, do it best. Just want to stop and praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> you didn't finish the introduction to crazy work you The Lord said to Moses, The tenth day of this seventh month is the day of atonement. Hold a sacred assembly and deny yourselves and present a food offering to the Lord. Do not do any work on that day because it is the day of atonement when atonement is made for you before the Lord your God. Those who do not deny themselves on that day must be cut off from their people. I will destroy from among their people anyone who does any work on that day. You shall do no work at all. This is to be a lasting ordinance for the generations to come, wherever you live. It is a day of Sabbath rest for you, and you must deny yourselves. From the evening of the ninth day of the month until the following evening, you are to observe your Sabbath. I am the Lord your God. So Moses announced to the Israelites the appointed festival. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on a throne, high and exalted, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphs, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying, and they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried. I am ruined. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphs flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongues from the altar. With it, he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. Uh, ah, yeah. Lord, I thank you. For forgiving me over and over again, yeah. I'm calling on you, Heavenly Father. I'm down on my knees. 
Say call on you no matter the hour. Lord, I'm in need. I've been messing up, done lost my house, done lost my job. Why walking out? These church folks say they my friends, but I'm all they talk about. I've been doing wrong, I'm so sorry. Lord, please forgive me. We confess to him here. Smoking a lot and drinking a lot and all up in the club. I've been doing this, I've been doing that, and I had no business doing it. No church or no Bible study ain't been in my word. Now I know better than this. Can't live my life in sin. We confess to him here. Everybody, Leandria Johnson. How can you forget? 
There's commotion in my brain, strange is the notion, words cannot explain my range of emotion, I'm speechless, my flaws exposed and my weakness, each breath draws me closer to a deep test, it's month number seven, it's been ten days, I've been awake all night reflecting on my ways, a threat to my peace in this greatest of moments, cause I'm the high priest and it's the day of atonement, the Lord is so holy and perfect, I'm nervous, I'm floored that he chose me to worship through service, don't ask me why the God who crafted the sky drafted this this weak guy from the clan of Levi, preceding generation, taught me to read the regulations. Deep meditation on decreed revelation, extreme trepidation, breeds hesitation. Yet I must lead and be the representation. My occupation to intercede for the nation, but indeed my own sins need expiation. The wrath of Jehovah's grim, sin is no joke to him. The hope is slim for unholy men coming close to him. He's spoken in his word the proper way of approach to him. They dab in the Bible who got it wrong and he roasted them. These things I'm as I sigh, this could either be the greatest day of my life or the day that I die. So you say that you want to know the Lord? Do you really want to stand before the Lord? Do you know what it takes to meet the Lord? Uh, God is an all-consuming uh, fire. So you say that you want to know the Lord? Do you really want to stand before the Lord? Do you know what it takes to meet the Lord? what you desire for now no time to focus on my sinning i bathe in the labor though it seems extreme i put on the holy coat made of white linen craving his favor i'm ceremonially clean i check to inspect no tangible faltering next i must collect the animals for the offering a spotless ram in the bowl the components god gives to make atonement for my own sins this part of the ritual makes me real cautious because the very sight of blood makes me feel nauseous still i proceed by Snatching them 
coat slash in his throat when his blood splashed on my coat reacting i choke gasping that's when i'm grasping god's reaction that's in provokes i take a moment to reflect on the blood spilt in this staring at the goat to be sent into the wilderness i'll confess israel sins with my hands on his head symbolizing guilt transferred instead to a substitute the living god provided and stamped guilty of our sin driven outside the camp this beautiful picture of hope and grace motivates and i don't want my fear to make this dope occasion go to waste change my outer garment slow my pace yo i brace myself to stand before jehovah's face in the holy so place say that you want to know the lord do you really want to stand before the lord do you know what it takes to meet the lord god is an all-consuming fire so you say that you want to know the lord do you really want to stand before the lord do you know what it takes to meet the lord be careful what you desire the time has come the great moment has arrived about to intervene what a lonely enterprise look at the other priest they speak only with the eyes rope tied around my ankle just in case i don't survive i enter through the first curtain to a dark room i'm standing in the holy place my thoughts consume i'm caught off guard i'm unraveling at this stage my heart beats so hard it's rattling my rib cage feeling like i'm disintegrating and i can't stand comforted by the light emanating from the lampstand this helps my vision i can see the showbread i think of god provision that helps me go ahead i need courage to worship man this is intense i take burning coals off the altar for the incense the sweet aroma fills the room the smoke protects my eyes one side of jehovah seals my doom it's no mere coincidence i'm here surrendering with fear and trembling i'm nearly entering i feel like running scared hoping i'm not unprepared stunned with fear no one comes in here but once a year nevertheless i'm at the point of no return besides i don't want my anointing to be spurned after counting the three Next time I exhale, I'm in the holy of holies beyond the veil. The first thing I realize is I'm thrilled that I've entered into God's presence and yet I'm still alive. I'm all struck by the weight of his terrible beauty. It's almost unbearable, but I must fulfill my duty. I approach the ark, the first part of my work's complete. When I sprinkle blood seven times on the mercy seat, quickly I exit, impressed with the hesed that rescues the wretched and left us accepted. It 
get somebody to worship the Lord they that worship the Lord must worship him in spirit and in truth you cannot come beyond the veil without a sacrifice you cannot come beyond the veil without a sacrifice give the Lord your sacrifice Will the real worshipers worship the Lord? Everything within you worship Him.
We're going to one on atonement. <laughs> okay, that's okay. Um, I was as praise and worship was going on. I just realized, and I got do, I'm doing my research now on John before, but when the priest, one of the songs, the rap one, y'all like that one? Mm-hmm. Um, he said the priest had to wear a rope in case he didn't make it out because of his yeah. sins. And I realized that only Yahusha could have pulled off the Passover and the atonement at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Because there was two that they could have killed, right? The Barnabas mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. and they said, Crucify him, crucify Yahusha and let the other dude go. So that's the the two goats, one went to the wilderness mm-hmm. and one wow. didn't make it. Wow. And he Yahusha didn't make it because mm-hmm. he was carrying our skin. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He had to die. He had to die. Sure mm-hmm. He didn't make it out. But this time when he comes back, yes, yes. His feet is gonna stand. On the Mount of Olives on the Day of Atonement. Yes. That's right. Yes. So that just yes. occurred to me while we were doing praise and worship. So you don't know what can happen. Yes. In praise and worship. I just wanted to say wow. that before we get to that was really I cool. think it's a question. That's right. But that's okay. <laughs> I think that's what it is, but that just occurred to me. Only the master could have done that. Pull off all of those right there on that one page. So I just said, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please stand for the Torah reading. We'll be reading from Genesis chapter 1. Always so like Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth, and the earth came to be formless and empty, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the spirit of Elohim was moving on the face of the waters. And Elohim said, Let light come to be. And light came to be. And Elohim saw the light, that it was good. And Elohim separated the light from the darkness. And Elohim called the light day, and the darkness he called night. 
and there came to be evening, and there came to be morning, one day. And Elohim said, Let an expanse come to be in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. And Elohim made the expanse and separated the waters which were under the expanse from the waters which were above the expanse, and it came to be so. And Elohim called the expanse heavens, and there came to be evening, and there came to be morning, the second day. And Elohim said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together into one place, and let dry land appear. And it came to be so. And Elohim called the dry land earth, and the collection of the waters he called seas. And Elohim saw that it was good. And Elohim said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the plant that yields seed, and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth. And it came to be so. And the earth brought forth grass, the plant that yields seed according to its kind, and the tree that yields fruit, whose seed is in itself according to its kind. And Elohim saw that it was good. And there came to be evening, and there came to be morning, the third day. And Elohim said, Let light come to be, lights come to be in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and appointed times, and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth. And it came to be so. And Elohim made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night, and the stars. And Elohim set them in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth, and to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And Elohim saw that it was good. And there came to be evening, and there came to be morning, the fourth day. And Elohim said, Let the waters teem with shoals of living beings, and let birds fly above the earth on the face of the expanse of the heavens. And Elohim created great sea creatures, and every living being that moves, with which the waters teem, according to the kind, and every winged bird according to its kind. And Elohim saw that it was good. And Elohim blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and increase, and fill the earth in, in the seas, and let the birds increase on the earth. And there came to be evening, and there came to be morning, the fifth day. And Elohim said, Let the earth bring forth the living being according to its kind, livestock and creeping creatures and beasts of the earth according to its kind. And it came to be so. And Elohim made the beasts of the earth according to its kind, livestock according to its kind, and all that creep on the earth according to its kind. And Elohim saw that it was good. And Elohim said, Let us make man in our image um, according to our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over all the creeping creatures that creep on the ground. And Elohim created the man in his image. In the image of Elohim, he created man, male and female, he created them. And Elohim blessed them, and Elohim said to them, Be fruitful and increase, and fill the earth and subdue it, and rule over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over all creeping creatures on the earth. And Elohim said, See, I have given you every plant that yields seed, which is on the face of the earth, and every tree whose fruits fruit yields seed. To you it is for food, and to every beast of the field, and to every bird of the heavens, and to every creeping creature on the earth, in which there is a living being, every green plant is for food. And it came to be so. And Elohim saw that all saw all that he had made, and see, it was very good. And there came to be evening, and there came to be morning, the sixth day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We will now have a song of meditation.
Oh, yeah. Okay. Let us all pray. Father, yeah, thank you for your set up our spirit. Thank you for your holy Shabbat. Please bless this presentation. Let us all come into the knowledge of who you are and who you created us to be. Your word says that we were created in your image. So help us understand what that image is. Um, increase our knowledge of who we are so that we can be free. Um, call us to be free people. All these things I ask in your son's name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Okay, so I've created, um, been studying melanin for a long time, so watching videos, reading books over the past few years, and so in December, 
of last year decided to maybe combine some of these things and make a presentation to share with everyone. So this is my testimony and what I've um, read and learned about melanin. So this presentation will be slightly formal, slightly informal. We have tons of videos to watch, about 16 today, um, many more to come. And these are excerpts of books that I've read, um, some recent, some not so recent, but they're all about melanin. So the first thing we would we want to know um, Okay, so throughout the presentation, feel free to raise your hand, ask questions. Um, I'll be moving around a lot. So, thank you. Okay, the first thing we want to know about melanin is why is it important for people to study melanin? So, this is, um, Again, the key, the key is freedom. We want to be a free people and we need to know about ourselves. And so much of our knowledge of who we are has been hidden from us. And as we were brought to America, we were discontinued from our heritage. So this is an important step to knowing who we are and thus knowing what our destiny is as a people. So from one of the books, uh, Dr. Africa, Dr. Laila Africa, he wrote a book called Melanin, um, What Makes Black People Black. And one of the things he wrote, writes in the book is why we need to study melanin. So I'll read an excerpt from that. The lectures and books of melanin are very Latin jargon centered. Most black people that read about melanin say, what good is it? It does not help you to be free. They, of course, they, of course, are correct. A black person is unaware of melanin. A black person unaware of melanin is manipulated and controlled by their unawareness. Mm. Black people need to know the basics about melanin and how to nourish melanin so they can get some positive use from it. Black people are controlled by their failure, failure to realize that the black race is a melanin dominant race. So the key to controlling black people is to reduce their blackness, which is melanin usage and knowledge. This will reduce their very ability to be black, which will directly affect their ability to be human and seek what is humanly theirs, which is freedom. Black people are a race nourishing themselves as if they are Caucasians. Mm -hmm. Since the Caucasians have the least amount of melanin by their own definition, um, then black people that eat as if they are Caucasians are giving themselves the least amount of nourishment to their melanin. This causes them to utilize their melanin the least. Therefore, black people are nutritionally against their own melanin and anti-melanin. They are ignorantly fighting against melanin and themselves. In this writing, I have briefly attempted to reveal melanin's property and how the body, human body, biochemically uses and nourishes it. Okay, so the next thing we want to know is what types of melanin are there? So in one of the books that I read by uh, Dr. Richard King, he wrote a book called Melanin, the Chemical Key to Freedom. And he writes about four different types of melanin. So here you can see cosmic melanin. Cosmic melanin, um, also known as melanin, complex organ, uh, organic molecules in interstellar gas clouds and galaxy central disk regions. So this is melanin in outer space, like in black holes and things like that. You have planetary melanin, which would be like in the soil and things like that. And then you have plant kingdom melanin, which is chlorophyll or photopigment equivalents. And then you have animal kingdom melanin, which is what we will mainly be talking about in today's presentation. So what is melanin? Oh, let's go to our first video. We'll take a pause for the first video. It is... Uh
Well, you know, they break it down. The Academy of Sci- New York Academy of Sciences breaks it down into four classes. The one, um, when you see the term EU melanin, the EU prefix yeah. means good, well, efficient. That means that it is the black to brown material, amorphous, and is found in all throughout life, throughout the earth. And that means that it, um, it is a molecule that vibrates at a certain frequency and also vibrate that those things are, or that material around it. So this is like the good melanin. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. it takes all the mm-hmm. light rays in and it utilizes them, changes it into a consciousness level, and it makes the body work. That's the first type. So that's the brown yeah. to black, and that one is found in the eyes, the 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 skin, uh, in melanomas, in the hair, in feathers, and so on, and is derived biochemically from an amino acid called tyrosine. Mm-hmm. Then there's a second type that we call pheomelanin, that means dusky, and that has proteins with sulfur, like such as dopamine or cystopa, and that's found in hair, fur, feathers, and it is a pheochrome or crystalline pheochrome. Uh, the Caucasians have that. The first type is in people of African origin or people with, that are heavily pigmented. In the second type, the pheomelanins, that's found in Caucasian, and that's a different chemistry than the eumelanin. <clears throat> the third type is called allomelanins, and that is brown to black, and it's nitrogen-free. It doesn't have any nitrogens in it, and it is found in the fungus of the soil and in uh, dark soil. <clears throat> and the last one is the neuromelanin, and that's brain melanin. That's the one that I'm very highly interested in, and this is yeah. found all in the central nervous system of humans and vertebrates. And um, there are different substrates that it is associated with, such as the uh, neurotransmitter called dopamine and Mm -hmm. tyrosine and epinephrine, norepinephrine, serotonin, and so forth. Well, you know, they break it down, the Academy of... Before, before, from Dr. Richard King's book, um, Melanin, the Chemical Key to Freedom. So we're moving to video number two by Ann Brown. Yes, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. I'm sure we can get into all the woo-woo about it. <laughs> yeah. But we won't. Yeah. <laughs> all right, exactly. Yes, yes, mm-hmm. beautiful. Well, we're going to take some questions now, if that's okay, or if there's something else sure. you want to share with yeah. that. Yes. Well, okay. you know, well, I have gonna... a, one of my mentors is Phil Valentine, in addition to Dr. Yeah. Richard King. And yeah. Phil, is, is, is he's a really very good source for metaphysical connection. Yes, um, there is some controversy as to what it really is, <clears throat> but from my uh, work and knowledge and training, um, it is the black material that's located in the brain. If you read Frank Barr's uh, Medical Hypothesis, there was a whole journal on melanin. He doesn't speak out. He writes, and he leaves it at that. But he said that melanin is an organizing molecule. That is, it is at the center of every function in the body. And I add to that by saying that it is a pigment <clears throat> located in the body, and it attracts a certain vibrational energy. And so it organizes every single function in the body. It is dependent on this uh, black material that we call melanin. Yes. Um, um, eumelanin, pheomelanin, allomelanin, and then neuromelanin. Allomelanin, I believe, is the one that's found in the ground, like in the soil. Um, and then you have neuromelanin, which everybody has, but black people have a higher concentration, or African people of African descent have a higher concentration of neuromelanin, and that's what give them, gives them um, different properties, and we'll go into that a little bit later. Let's move on to general general information about melanin. So this is coming from K 
Carol Barnes, uh, she wrote a, he wrote a book on, on melanin. It's called Melanin, the Chemical Key to Black Greatness. It says the chemical melanin is a unique biopolymer of or life chemical found in high concentrations in various organs and functional centers, melanin centers in the black human, which is a black man, black woman. In the past, melanin was considered by Western scientists to be a waste product of body metabolism and so served no useful function within the body of the black human. Because of prejudice and foolishness. Oh, because of prejudice and foolishness. Um, a lot of times when people think about melanin, you think about it's the color of your skin or it makes your skin darker. But as we heard, that everybody has melanin or most people have melanin unless you're albino. Um, Caucasians have fail melanin and black people have you melanin. So oftentimes when we hear about melanin, we think about it as just pigment for the skin. But we heard a type of melanin um, earlier in the interview with Ann Brown called neuromelanin. So everyone has neuromelanin and the skin is actually a modified nerve cell. So it's an indicator of what's going on with the entire nervous system of human of human beings. So when you see someone who is dark skin, it's likely that their melanin in their other organ systems in the nervous system is highly pigmented or highly concentrated. They have a higher concentration of neuromelanin as well. However, you often um, within African Americans here in America, there's this light skin, um, dark skin um, differentiation, and some people wonder, okay, do people with lighter skin do they have the same amount of melanin, or what's going on with that? It's it's really the melanin that's inside that neuromelanin within those organ centers that's concentrated that really determines um, those things, and I think we'll hear more about that later. Let's move on to the origin of the word melanin. So, melano is a Greek word which means black. The word male is derived from melano, and therefore male equals black. Um, additional research that I have on the word male, you can hear it in words like SAT type words. Um, like, male means sweet. It means, um, it has something to do with honey. But also, there's a word that we use called mellifluous, which means flowing sweetly. So something that flows sweetly. You hear the words melody. So again, melanin is a pos or male is a positive thing. Often in this uh, society, it's um, the connotation of black people or people of darker pigment is something of that that that's negative. But by something that's negative, but by the language, um, the origin of the word, it's it's should be a good thing. So that's the perspective that we want to have on melanin. Um, let's move on. Anine is derived from a similar word called amine. Amine is a nitrogen-based functional group derived from ammonia. Um, we're not going to get into this, but you guys can read more about that later if you want. This is the proposed structure of melanin. At this time, there's no definitive um, exact structure of melanin, so the exact structure of melanin is unknown. It's known to be very stable, and it's very resist uh, resistant to analysis and that's why no one knows the exact structure of melanin. However, we do know some of the compounds that make up melanin. So composition of the word melanin. We have phenylalanine. We have um an online comment or question. You want to take it yes, now? We or, can take it. We can take it down. Um Chinon just wanted to know if uh land flown with milk and honey had anything to do with melanin it might be. Yeah. That's a good. That, that's a very good question. So, um, we looked up the word milk, and I think it was Lavona or something. It had to do with the same origin of the word Laban, which was the uncle of Yaakov and the brother, or the the, the brother-in-law of Isaac. Um, that that whole thing, and even the word frankincense, which we know to be resin, which is white. Um, it comes from that word, uh. Levon or Le Levona, um, they're all related to each other, and that has to do with um, whiteness and, and the color that it has, but I don't know. That's something to research. I'll, I'll keep that in mind, and maybe it'll come to me. Um, let's, let's all write that down and keep it in mind. So you have phenylalanine. You have um, the amino acid tyrosine, you have petrolamines such as dopamine, norepinephrine, epinephrine, which is also called adrenaline and noradrenaline. You have serotonin, you have melatonin. So 
phenylalanine, and these are all smaller chemical units that, that comprise melanin. You have phenylalanine, which is the precursor of adrenaline, um, noradrenaline, and dopamine, and these are our stress hormones, so they trigger the flight or fl flight, the fight or flight response. So when, when they're releasing to the bloodstream, you have an increase in heart rate, increase in blood pressure, and an increase in blood glucose, and this causes problems for Africans in particular who are constantly, constantly under stress, and this causes those long-term problems. Um, we have serotonin and melatonin, and melatonin derivatives, which are produced by the pineal gland. Some other chemicals that make up melanin are purines. Purines are, they make up the nitrogenous base, adenine and guanine, and DNA and RNA. You also have caffeine. Caffeine is a purine. It's a type of purine. Uric acid is a type of purine. When uric acid is concentrated in the blood, people get gout. Um, you also get diabetes and kidney stones. Another purine that's well known is ATP in biology. You study ATP, which is um, the source of energy for different types of cells. Um, certain neurotransmitters can be classified as purines. The next word that we have, uh, which comprises melanin, is pteridines. Pteridines are used to make DNA and RNA bases as well, and they're derived from folic acid. One of the main sources of folic acid um, is spinach, and your dark leafy greens such as spinach, asparagus, turnip greens, lettuce. Folic acid deficiency leads to nerve damage, among other things. And again, we talked about melanin being related to um, the, the, the existence of neuromelanin. So in one of the, the videos we just saw, Anne Brown mentioned, or she quoted someone as saying how melanin is an organizing molecule. So when you have a deficiency of uh, folic acid, especially mothers who are pregnant, you will have neural tube defects in developing embryos. So keeping that in mind, that goes, that supports the theory or the idea that melanin is an organizing molecule because this component that comprises melanin, this folic acid that you can get from spinach in your dark leafy greens, when, when it's absent, you have these neural defects um, in a developing embryo. So keep that in mind. You can also get folic acid from legumes. Um, folate itself is important in cell division. So again, melanin organizes, it, it helps to organize cell division. Um, the next word that we have is naphthoquinone. Naphthoquinone is a precursor of vitamin K. Um, the most abundant one that we can find in nature is phyloquinone, which is, um, it functions as an electron acceptor in photosystem one during photosynthesis. So during photosynthesis, rays from the sun, light rays from the sun, strike the photosystem one, and there's a displacement of an electron, and you have this whole process by which um, water molecules are split to release oxygen, and the hydrogens um, eventually get incorporated into uh, carbohydrates like glucose. So vitamin K, for this reason, vitamin K is found in large quantities in photosynthetic tissues of plants. You can get them in dark leafy greens, such as, again, romaine, lettuce, spinach, kale. Uh, vitamin K in animals is involved with, among other things, the body of calcium. So it's important to have vitamin K, and again, you can get that in various places, and we'll talk more about that when we get into food and dietary law um, over the next few weeks, but that definitely won't be today. The next word is anthra, anthraquinone. Um, that's a laxative, so in high concentrations, it's a laxative, and in excess, it causes um, a condition known as melan uh, melanosis coli, which is pigmentation of the wall of the colon. So if you have um, a high or excess of this, it causes pigmentation of the colon. So that suggests to me that this particular um, component might help comprise the color of melanin and maybe contribute somewhat to the color of melanin. We'll go into how color works um, momentarily. The next word is phenoxenones. Phenoxenones. Again, based on the research that I was able to find with this word, it has to do with staining and colorations. Polycyclic quinones. I didn't find much with that. The flavins or the flavonoids, maybe what they contribute to melanin as a whole. Let's move on. Um, so all of these all of these smaller components either polymerize or copolymerize into the melanin structures. Uh, 
Here are some other chemicals that polymerize into melanin. We have phenylalanine, which we mentioned before, tyrosine, dopa, dopamine, norepinephrine, epinephrine, tryptophan, serotonin, and melatonin through different types of processes such as heat, oxida oxidation, um, indole, quinone, and free radical intermediates, we get melanin somehow. Uh, melanin has chemical and physical properties which distinguish it from other chemicals and is so fantastic that it may be considered divine. This is coming mm. from, this is coming from, again, Carol Barnes in What is Melanin? Um, the book called Melanin and Chemical Key to Black Greatness. So you have, the, the blackness of melanin is a physical property. The physical property or blackness only designates the color of melanin. Melanin has other properties such as odor. Melanin has a pleasant smell, which is important in sexual attraction. This odor may be attributed to the high, highly aromatic trait, amine or nitrogen functional group, and or sulfur, sulfur elemental metal content within its structure. Another property of mel uh, melanin is thermal resistance. Even exposed up to 1,225 degrees Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit, melanin retains approximately 50% of its original properties. I don't know any other substance that does. Me Although neither. I guess I'm not well versed in different things like that. Um, I'm not a physical scientist, so I don't know if there are other um, chemicals that may be compared to that. Melanin has a physical property of being of, of toughness. Um, Melanin structure of aromatic wings makes it rigid but flexible like rubber or plastic. So when you study organic chemistry and you study um, aromatics, you know that there's shifting electrons that I believe contribute to the stability of the um, molecule. And it can take on different properties because of those shifting electrons. It can, it can take on different shapes. Uh, this physical property is why the black human skin is tough and hard to penetrate with a medical syringe. Melanin also causes the expressive flamboyant and cocky nature of the black human toughness. Another property of melanin. Wait a second. Let's hold on. Let's take um. Let's take comments at the end. Okay. Yeah, we need to get through. Um, melanin. Doctor Africa. Melanin. This is from Doctor Africa's book. Melanin is a civilizing chemical. It reproduces itself. It's a free radical protector. It can be transformed into blood. It concentrates nerve and brain information. It neutralizes and oxidizes. And oxidation is the breakdown of substances. Substances. Uh, it reduces, which is the buildup of substances, and is unchanged by radiation and high temperatures. Melanin is inside and outside the body. The more melanin a race has, the more humane and civilized the race. Uh, science myths, which are theories, have clouded and avoided the true information about melanin and the pineal gland that secretes melanin. So now we're going to talk about um, just more things about more properties of melanin. Melanin is a vital chemical that makes life itself. It is usually brown to black in color. Melanin is a flexible like plastic, can resemble a cloud, gas, wood, metal, or liquid. It takes on many forms without losing its structure. That sounds like, yeah. And mm -hmm. It comes in different forms. Uh, it is heat resistant, can endure temperatures again of up to 125, 100, 2000, uh, 100, 1225 degrees Fahrenheit, and has a pleasant odor, resists x ray diffraction. Again, it's hard to detect what the true structure is. Um, it resists strong acids in its, and, and alkalines or bases, and it's found in the environment springs, lakes, soil, plants, atmosphere, and Animals. Um, again, that's an aloe melanin that they were talking about earlier. Now we're going to go into the perception of melanin and why it is um, skipping these and why it is yeah, I didn't, okay, these are more for um, later okay, we're here so now we're going into why melanin is perceived as black and how the perception of color works. So the color of melanin appears as black because it is absorbing all colors. Mm -hmm. Once the color enters the melanin, it cannot escape, just like a black hole. Melanin is concentrated colors. It is a cellular black hole similar to the black holes in outer space. The human eye only sees colors that are reflected away from an object. If an object appears black in color, that means that the object is absorbing all colors except black. 
Black is reflected away from the object, and consequently you see black. Black is a pigment or color that makes carbon black in appearance. Um, here's another perspective on why melanin is black. The first one came from Dr. Africa. This one comes from Dr. Carol Barnes in the book entitled Melanin, the Chemical Key to Black Greatness. He, he writes, melanin is black simply because its chemical structure will not allow any type of energy to escape once that energy has come into contact with the structure. So melanin absorbs energy. And we'll go into that more next week. A number of steps must take place within the melanin structure to accomplish this task of being totally efficient towards capturing energy. And again, similar to what you see in photosynthesis with the displacement of electrons, the same thing happens in melanin. Um, when these steps are completed, no energy is reflected away from the surface of the melanin structure. The human eye sees the color of an object as light reflects from the surface of that, uh, that object. If no light or energy is reflected, then that object will appear to the eyes to be black in color. If all of the energy is reflected from the surface of an object, that object will appear white in color. If an object is red in color, that means that the object is absorbing all energy around it except the red energy, which is reflected away from the object. The eyes capture and process the red light that is reflected. Therefore, you see red. We're now going, we're transitioning into three more videos, and then we'll have a, I'll go into more. So we're going into Ann Brown lecture number four, video number four, and then we will go into a video entitled Racism on Your Plate, and then uh, into Understanding Melanin in Part One. chemistry that makes it different. Yes, that's yes. correct. And, and it depends on the chemistry that makes it different. Yes, that's yes. correct. And, and it depends on the chemistry that makes it different. The question is, does everyone have some form of melanin? And I believe it was directed towards black and white people, um, or just people as a whole. So does everyone have some form of melanin? And she says, uh, yeah. That's yes. correct. And, and it depends on the chemistry that makes it different. Yes. That's yes. correct. And, and it depends on the chemistry that makes it different. Yes. That's yes. correct. And, people versus white people. So this is racism on your plate, video number four. This part of the, um, um, the um, bio, biochemical makeup of Europeans juxtaposed to, uh, I'll say, highly melanated people, or should I say you melanin, juxtaposed to fetal melanin, what's the vast difference between that? Well, we're talking about how races are classified, and that's based on their melanin content of their bodies, not the melanin content of the skin. That's right. Because you can have light-skinned black people, so we've measured the ability to make this chemical called melanin, which we associate with our skin. But this chemical is in their brain and in their nervous system, causing them to transmit messages quicker, store more information, absorb more color when they see color, they see the true color, absorb more sound when they hear sound because of the melanin in their ears. And they have melanin in their taste buds, which means they can absorb the true flavor of food. So the melanin is what we call a biochemical marker for life. The more melanin you have, the more human you are, the more psychic you are, the more spiritual you are. That sort of thing. As far as the um, bio biochemical makeup of Europeans juxtaposed to, uh, I'll say, highly melanated people, or should I say you melanin juxtaposed to fetal melanin, What's the vast difference between that? Well, we're talking about how races are classified, and that's based on their melanin content of their bodies, not the melanin content of the skin. That's right. Because you can have light-skinned black people, so we've measured the, the ability to make this chemical called melanin, which we associate with our skin. So this
is associated with the color of your skin. However, this pigment called melanin is part of your nervous system and your brain and is basically the chemical key to life. It is called a civilizing chemical because it regulates all the rhythms in your body when your eyebrow should grow, when you should become a man, puberty, when you should become a woman, what time your liver should be fed, what time your heart should be fed. It regulates all the rhythmicity of your system. It's a synchronizing chemical, better known as a civilizing chemical. It's how we classify races based on the pigment that they have. We're classified on the highest on the uh, racial scale by the Europeans themselves. Everyone else has a lesser degree of melanin, and the Europeans classify themselves as having the least amount of melanin of any race. This causes them to have more ammonia in their system than black people, and more sulfur. Uh, I think it's the only time you smell it is when the hair gets wet. You're smelling the ammonia and sulfur. Sulfur makes things smell rotten. And they have more salt in their body than you do. And they have the least amount of peripheral circulation, which is circulation to your skin, than you do. The problem with ammonia is that if you put it in like a sub-degree temperature, it will boil. When you put it in a hot oven around 300 degrees Fahrenheit or so, it will freeze. It's a very tricky chemical. And that's why you walk into a room and it's very cold and white people in it, they feel comfortable. Because mm -hmm. the ammonia is making them feel warm. That's why you see them walking around with shorts in the snow. <laughs> they have a lot of ammonia. They are biochemically different from you. Melanin is associated with the color of your skin. However, this pigment called melanin is part of your nervous system and your brain. And is basically the chemical key to life. It is called a civilizing chemical because it regulates all the rhythms in your body when your eyebrow should grow, when you should become a man, puberty, when you should become a woman, what time your liver should be fed, what time your heart should be fed. It regulates all the rhythmicity of your system. It's a synchronizing chemical, better known as a civilizing chemical. It's how we classify races based on the pigment that they have. We're classified on the highest on the uh, racial scale by the Europeans themselves. Everyone else has a lesser degree of melanin, and the Europeans classify themselves as having the least amount of melanin of any race. Working on the kinks this week, mixed with this flow better. It's all my fault. I do want to see if you can do it. Go down to see if the chain of play is going to work. I'm going to start you up. That's what I did last week. Is that what I want?
the melanin which is inside uh, the melanosome, you have the melanocytes, which are the cells that produce the melanin, and then you have the melanosomes, which are specialized cells within the melanocytes that produce the melanin and where the melanin is eventually stored. I was told by a professor once that everyone has the same amount. It's just the size of their melanosomes. Um, and maybe that's partially true based on what we see here in this picture. Um, At the bottom, it says lack of melanin reduces one's ability to neutralize free radicals, thus reducing an individual's resistance to skin cancer. Um, this might also this may also be true for many other internal forms of cancer. Melanin is within the. So melanin. Um, Again, we go back to the concept of neuromelanin. So here you see different parts of the nervous system. This is the central nervous system. You see the brain, the spinal cord. Um, the spinal cord is a soft column of nerve tissue enclosed within the bone of the spine. Areas of the brain and spinal cord where melanin is found include the substantia nigra, the midbrain reticular formation, ventral tegmental area, pontane a reticular formation, locus aurelius, glial cells, um, Substantia nigra, that's what goes away or it degenerates when you have Parkinson's disease. So within the, within those patients, uh, substantia nigra actually means um, substantial amount of blackness. So that's where the word comes from, substantial nigra and nigra is black. Um, it's a black part of the brain that you can observe. It's heavily pigmented and that part is... Um, associated with various functions within the brain, and one of them is, I believe, producing dopamine, which makes you doped up and happy. Um, we'll go on to that, talk about that later. Here's how melanin is produced within the internal organs. The chemical re reaction that leads to melanin production in internal organs is outlined here. Here we see tyrosine, which is um, an amino acid. It is catalyzed by uh, tyrosinase, and tyrosinase is an enzyme. And so in biology, kids, you guys will learn um, pretty soon about this in biology. Not this specifically, they will tell you about this, but how enzymes work. They basically speed up chemical reactions. So the, the reaction of tyrosine going to DOPA would happen at regular levels just very, very slowly, or maybe not even at all, no measurable levels. So you have what's called an enzyme that speeds up that reaction and it occurs much more quickly. So we see that this hydroxyl group is oxidized to be, um, well, actually, it's not oxidized, and I think they drew this wrong because there shouldn't be two bonds going to the oxygen, but it's wrong. I think the picture looks wrong. Um, the tyrosinase actually adds a hydroxyl group, which is what the OH is, to that, which converts tyrosine to dopa, and that's the difference between tyrosine and dopa. We then Here's a description of the step. In a single step, a single hydroxyl group was added to the benzene portion of tyrosine to produce dopa. So this step is identical to step one in the production of skin melanin outlined earlier. Um, we didn't talk about that, but there's, there's common steps in the pathway of melanin production. Once dopa is formed, melanin tissue must make a decision whether to produce skin melanin or neuromelanin. This is the pivotal point. If the tyrosine catalyst acts upon dopa, skin melanin is produced. If the dopa carboxylase catalyst acts upon dopa, neuromelanin is produced. So we will now continue to the explanation of neuromelanin manufactured by the action of dopa carboxylase catalyst. That's a little technical and a little too detailed for what we're trying to see, but if you are so inclined and you're studying biology, this might be something interesting to research. Um, again, you have dopa converted by decarboxylase to dopaquinone. You have an intermediate species which eventually becomes dopamine. Dopamine is converted by tyrosinase into dopaquinone. Dopaquinone is converted into indole 5 6 quinone. And then that is eventually converted into neuromelanin. So we'll continue. To summarize, melanin is produced by melanosomes located within highly specialized cells called melanocytes. So some, some means body, like somatic cells means body, site means cells. Uh, the amount or quantity of melanin produced is controlled by a battery-like chemical or catalyst called tyros tyrosinase, peroxidase, and or melanin copper complex. So the activity of tyrosinase determines if an individual will be 
and albino or have significant quantities of melanin for proper body function. Amino acids, cholin or indoles, indolamines, cholamine derivatives, derivatives all polymerize in the melanin. We talked about that before. And neuromelanin for deposition in skin and other external organs, as well as internal organs such as the brain, heart, and other places. Melanin is also located within. We we talked about the central nervous system, the autonomic nervous system, um, the peripheral nervous system, which would be the skin. Again, the skin is a modified nerve cell. Uh, diffuse neuroendocrine organs or glands, which are we also term melanin clusters. So the endocrine glands are sometimes called chakras, but we call them melanin clusters. Uh, visceras, which are major internal organs. So again, to summarize, melanin is made by cells called melanocytes. Inside the melanocytes are smaller organs or organelles called melanosomes, which make melanin. Inside the endoplasmic reticulum, the melanosomes are made, and you'll learn about this in biology. In other words, small cells build bigger cells, bigger cells build larger cells, and the end product of all the building from a single particle into a larger particle is the chemical melanin. How melanin is manufactured in the black human. So these are all from different... The, the three different books, the main three books that I use for this presentation, um, they all have a uh, similar but different perspective on how melanin is made. I'm not going to get into this one. Again, you have melanosome, melanocytes, and melanin. Uh, I'm going to skip over this. Let's cue another video. And Brown, uh, video number five. Oh, sure. Um, the, all the plants have some form of pigment, and some of them you can't tell until they have come to the end of their life. Uh, most of them that we know about have chlorophyll in them. So melanin and chlorophyll are very, very much related. Chlorophyll yeah. has in its core of the molecule magnesium. Uh, if you compare that to <clears throat> hemoglobin, excuse me, hemoglobin, hemoglobin has iron in its core molecule, and that if you take blood, for example, and put it on the desk and leave it, say, overnight and it dries, it's going to turn black, which means that yeah. one form is red, and another form, it is black. So black material, which we call melanin, is really found in all the plants because most of them have green pigmentation. So maybe at one point we were green people, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, it's kind of, yes. kind of far-fetched, yes, but can... the chemistry Not at is all. very similar. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. And if yes. you take bacteria, take fungus. If you the, mm -hmm. the bread molds that you see when they ripe, uh, the the ripened bread mold is really black, has a black head with spores in it. And if you break that head open containing the spores and it falls down on the bread, it produces more of its of the, of the like kind. So it. Pigment right. or black material is found in from the stratosphere to the hydrosphere to the ionosphere to the earth and the water in the sea, deep in the water, etc. So it's found everywhere in nature. There's pigment. Oh, sure. Um, melanin in our system and it's high in your brain which causes you to store more information in your brain we call it ancestral memory this is blocked by a chemical called synthetic oxytocin given to women when they're pregnant try, trying to induce labor which causes the child to have blocked ancestral memory can't connect to their past too well they don't hear none of that black stuff so you have this melanin in your body, and it's primary secreted, made in your intestines. It's made in all parts of your body, like blood cells are made in all parts of your body. It's primarily secreted by a gland called the pineal gland, which is in the center, or have seven. 
and you going around trying to act like those retards. You got 12 melanin centers. They have seven. So you denying the rest of yourself by following them. They're not as smart as you are. The more melanin you are, the more intelligent you are. The more intelligence you have with smell, with touch, with vision. You have all this intelligence. You're just using one to measure your whole life. One will destroy you. You're just using one to measure. You're denying all the other intelligence that you have. So when you're trying to talk to them and you show them this emotional rainbow that you have, you're too emotional. Oh, get too emotional. What? This is emotion. You just ain't never seen it before. <laughs> this is you look at him trying to explain it. I'm just being human. You want me to get in a tweet. That's all. <laughs> I don't want to go there. But I'm just saying, you showing them all of this emotional. It scares the hell out of them. Look, calm down. Uh, wait. <laughs> That's because of the melanin. There's certain physical things that makes you more human. Because I can see my hand out the corner of my eyes. That's called a field of vision. The Orientals can see here. The Europeans can see here. This is their field of vision. If you walk over here, you walk out that field of vision. They won't see you. You walk right by them, they won't even see you. You know why they didn't see you? Because you walked out that field of vision. <laughs> that white man walked by me and didn't see you. That's right. <laughs> you walked out his field of vision. <laughs> you see more of life than anybody. <laughs> You're black. <laughs> you got all these emotions, all this intelligence. It scares people. I was on a bus with these people for two weeks. We were going to Mecca, Medina, and something I was doing when I was a young and adventurous. And I'm on the desert with these people for two weeks. East Indians, Europeans, uh, Arabs, and some other assortment of crackazoids. So, I mean, uh, melanin challenge people. I'm trying to be scientific, you know. I'm on the bus with these folks for two weeks, and, you know, white people smell different, you know. And then the East Indians smell different, you know. And I'm getting all of these smells, you know. So I, I had to get off the bus because I was getting funkerized. <laughs> I was getting, like, funky, you know. So I stepped off the bus. And I just got on the bus accidentally. They were talking about me. And I, said, I got on the bus. And he comes smelling like vegetables and fruit. I, said, I didn't know we smelled. I really didn't know black people smelled. They said, they come and smell like some damn vegetables and fruit. Smell like a banana. <laughs> damn, I didn't know I was offending them. I thought they were they were funky and offending me. I'm offending them. <laughs> I said, well, excuse me, I didn't know I smelled like something alive. <laughs> <laughs>
but as of Yah, in the sight of Yah, we speak in the sight. Okay, let's get back to the presentation. PowerPoint. So, let's see. I'm going to get to the more relevant things. Again, this is, they have different perspectives and different information on how melanin is produced. Uh, I'll get into more of this developmental stuff next week when we talk more about, uh, we'll talk more about melanin concentrations and other parts that are not quite the nervous system, so our internal organs and how it plays a role in development. And then we'll talk about next week also, if we get time, how these things go wrong. Or so what happens when it goes wrong when we do things to harm our melanin, such as taking specific drugs which are related and structured to melanin, but have a harmful effect. And some people theorize that these drugs were actually made to target people who are melanin, who have a, a certain type of melanin, because they have such a similar structure to melanin, and they do such damage. And that's kind of what we'll talk about next week. But right now, we'll go into the pineal gland, more information about the pineal gland. So um, give me just a moment. Okay, let's talk about this just a little bit. So this will kind of lead us into the next week. Melanin is produced inside a cell within the human body known as the melanocyte, which was reported by Brenna to arise from three sources, the neural crest, optic cup, and neural tube. And again, we said we would have neural tube defects if, the, if a woman didn't get enough folate during the pregnancy. The neural crest is an outer layer surrounding the neural tube. The neural tube is formed in the very early embryo by an imagination or inward movement of a point, a black dot as a line of cells from the surface of a melanin-containing ectoderm, which is the outer layer of the gastrula stage. So this rapidly dividing ball of cells of life is the direct result of fertilization of the melanin-containing female egg or the melanin-containing male spermatozoa. The optic cup in the early embryo will later develop into male spermatozoa. The optic cup in the early embryo will later develop into the eye, and it is from, oh sorry, yeah, the optic cup in the early embryo will later develop into the eye. It is from the outer wall of the optic cup that there is another side of melan mel melanocyte origin. This layer becomes the retina in all vertebrate animals and all humans, regardless of the color of the skin. For without a melanin black pigment layer of the retina, such an eye will be blind and non functional. Mm -hmm. The cranial neural tube, the result of the imagination of the melanin containing ectoderm, is a site of origin of many pigmented neurons that are found throughout the brain. The, mel the melanin found in these neurons is known as neuromelanin and is present in the brain of all humans regardless of the degree of skin color. So again, skin color, you have phaeo melanin and you have new melanin. Um, let's move into another video. Let's cue Understanding Melanin by Dr. Africa, video number three. Brain and a water filled space called the third ventricle. And inside of this ventricle, this water filled space in your center of your brain, is the pineal gland. It's about the size of a pea, a green pea, and it's shaped like a pine cone, thus the name pineal gland. <laughs> Only dead things stink. <laughs> and you certain things that are done uh, in your body, such as reproduction, that's mostly mediated by melanin. It's the ability of the sperm to transport a black dot, and that black dot is melanin. And once that black dot strikes the egg, electrical spark goes off very high. Of course, it spins like the planets do. It has rotations, which are originally set in motion by hearing your father and smelling your mother. It causes a lateral and horizontal quiver reaction in the pineal gland that causes the child to, to be bonded to you <coughs> in a special way that they can't be bonded to a, a parent that adopts them. This is the pineal gland. It's melanin in our system and it's high in your brain 
which causes you to store more information in your brain. We call it ancestral memory. This is blocked by a chemical called synthetic oxytocin given to women when they're pregnant, try, trying to induce labor, which causes the child to have blocked ancestral memory, can't connect to their past too well. They don't hear none of that black stuff. So you have this melanin in your body, and it's primary secreted, made in your intestines. It's made in all parts of your body, like blood cells are made in all parts of your body. It's primarily secreted by a gland called the pineal gland, which is in the center of your brain, and a water-filled space called the third ventricle. And inside of this ventricle, this water-filled space in your center of your brain is the pineal gland. It's about the size of a pea, a green pea, and it's shaped like a pine cone, thus the name pineal gland. It, um, of course, it spins like the planets do. It has rotations, which are originally set in motion by hearing your father and smelling your mother. It causes a lateral and horizontal quiver reaction in the pineal gland that causes the child to, to be bonded to you in a special way that they can't be bonded to a, a parent that adopts them. This is the pineal gland. It's melanin in our system and it's high in your brain which causes you to store more information in your brain. We call it ancestral memory. This is blocked by a chemical called synthetic oxytocin given to women when they're pregnant, try, trying to induce labor, which causes the child to have blocked ancestral memory, can't connect to their past too well. They don't hear none of that black stuff. You know? So you have this melanin in your body, and it's primarily secreted, made in your intestines, it's made in all parts of your body, like blood cells are made in all parts of your body. It's primarily secreted by a gland called the pineal gland, which is in the center of your brain, and a water-filled space called the third ventricle. And inside of this ventricle, or this water-filled space in your center of your brain, is the pineal gland. It's about the size of a pea, a green pea. I'm not sure that I said it's the only singular gland in the body, uh, only single <laughs> gland in the body. It certainly is very important, although it produces a very small amount of its own uh, hormone or neurotransmitter, mm -hmm. and that is the melatonin right. and serotonin. <clears throat> See, the okay. pineal gland, being where it's located in the human in higher forms, is, it goes down in between the, uh, the two hemispheres. In crawl, creeping animals on the earth, like a, the snake and crawling ones, like the snake and yeah. creeping ones, like... Uh, like the frog, et cetera, uh, that pineal gland is located just underneath the skin in bet between the two eyes. That's why we call it the third eye, but it's actually the first eye. And it's there to uh, pick up the vibrational movement of that which is around that animal so that they can run away if they'd like to escape to, for survival reasons. So the pineal right. gland is the gland of, of uh, vibrational reception or receptivity, and also it is, in us, a gland of, of uh, psychic ability. So it puts you in tune yes. with what is or that which is. I call it the mm -hmm. gland of spirituality. So beautiful, it beautiful. So go, goes down within us because we're upright creatures and we're more advanced in many ways than, say, the creeping animals. So <laughs> uh, it's useful to us because we um, um, have other ways in which we see things and feel things around us. Um not sure oh, that okay, I, we didn't we didn't cover that before. So it's a good question. Yeah. Uh there mm -hmm. was a study done and I have access to those papers uh I think in the late 80s or early 90s. Um they took mm -hmm. samples of people of Caucasian origin, people of Asian origin and people of African origin mainly in Africa and in this country. And when they looked at the pineal gland, uh, that is the structure and um, uh, the um, whether it's uh, uh, soft or hard or whatever, they found that in over 60% of the Caucasians, 
the pineal gland was what they call calcified but not inactive. But the reduction mm-hmm. in the activity was re- was related to the calcification. Um, and they looked at the Asians, about 20% of theirs were calcified, and the African Americans, uh, less than 10%. Of those they studied, now we cannot use that as yeah. a universal fact, but of those mm-hmm. they studied, the highest amount of calcification was in the uh, Caucasian group, and the next uh, the, uh, next to that was the Asian group that had 20%, and a few of them were less, and the African uh, group was less than 10%. So that means then if the pineal gland being your gland of spirituality and, and your awareness, <clears throat> that if it's calcified, then it is not functioning at its highest peak. So you cannot perceive in the depths of a situation. In other words, just the, just above the surface or at the surface. And if it's working mm-hmm. and, and working uh, uh, the way it should, then perception is stronger, which means then uh, if it's a gland of spirituality, if it's calcified, then uh, you will focus more on uh, materialism rather than spirituality. Yeah. And so that's where they left the study. So when you look at yep. people in general, you, I mean, we all have those issues of, you know, um, you know, yeah. we buy stuff and we're very materialistic in some cases. Yeah. And yeah. so, but I'm talking about the innateness of the person, uh, if we can mm-hmm. call it that. Uh, those that have a more functioning pineal gland, uh, the deeper their spirituality is, and mm-hmm. their ability to perceive below the surface. You know how we put the hand on the hip and say, "Uh, uh-uh, he ain't do that, honey. <laughs> yes. It's <laughs> similar to that. We can okay. see things. And, you know, we can't mm-hmm. explain that. We just can see things in a different way than some other people. Yes. Oh, okay, we didn't. ...is involved in spirituality and it decreased, like, a separation from God. Because often when these people were cursed with leprosy, they were separated from him and they were considered unclean. And... They had done something spiritually to make them separated from Yah. So we know that with Miriam, when she was speaking against Moshe's wife, she got leprosy. Um, the guy who stole the silver, he was being materialistic. He wanted that money from the guy. And this is in, I believe, First Kings. He, or First or Second Kings, he wanted the money from Haman or Naaman or, and the, the, the leprosy of Naaman clung to him and his descendants forever. And we saw this as something that was superficial and, he was, he was going after money. Uh, let's move on to the last video for today. Uh, Mona Harrison, Water, number seven. It's the lady. Well, that's not that it. has not to it. do with the effect of the person. Which one is it? This one. Yeah. Now, what about the old four eyes? Scare. What in the dick is going on with fluoride? What about the old fluoride? Scare. What in the dick is going on with fluoride? There have been debates back and forth. There have been um, blow-ups in different legislatures as to whether or not fluoride should be used. The studies that originally talked about fluoride came about during the 1930s. And it was done at the Carnegie Mellon Institute. Now, Carnegie Mellon happens to be one of the biggest (laughs) benefactors of the aluminum industry with Alcoa Aluminum. The aluminum industry has a problem. They don't know what to do with the byproducts of making aluminum. And in fact, around any aluminum plant, you'll find there's no vegetation for miles. And any animals that happen to be grazing in farms or whatever near an aluminum plant, you'll find, dies very and ages very fast. Well, the same thing happens to you if you're exposed to fluoride. Your body will age doubly fast. So a 30-year-old will look like they're 60 years old. And in areas of the world where fluoride is naturally, these people do age very, very fast. In addition to that, going back to that study which says we should add fluoride to the water because it will prevent tooth decay in children. Wrong. When they tried to repeat that study, 
And that study was done by a benefactor of the aluminum industry at Carnegie Mellon. When they tried to repeat that study, they found it was not correct. And in fact, it caused further decay of the teeth. In other words, it enhanced decay of the teeth rather than preventing decays. I don't know if you're aware, but fluoride is the chemical that's used, that's injected into zoo animals in the bulls and the bullfighting rings of Spain to keep them docile. In Russia, while the Iron Curtain was still down, I don't know if they're still doing it or not, but they added fluoride to the drinking water of all the prisoners to keep them under control. I'll let you draw your own conclusions as to why fluoride perhaps is being added to our drinking water, but it's there. Now, what about the old fluoride? In one of the, the papers that I read about this, fluoride contributes to the calcification of the pineal gland. And the pineal gland, again, um, it has to do with aging. So when the pineal gland is calcified, you see this rapid aging, um, and that's due to calcification of the pineal gland, which fluoride contributes. So that's, I think that's the connection between fluoride and then the, the rapid aging. Um, and again, we yeah, saw in the different favorite. types, we saw in the six different types, um, and the higher the type, the less um, calcification of the pineal gland, and thus the, the skin aging in type six was five to 60 uh, years old. We saw the, the skin aging beginning, but in the other types, you saw 25 to 30, which maybe suggests uh, early earlier pineal gland calcification. I don't know, I'm, I'm not a scientist. But uh, that is it for today's presentation. Let us wrap up. We're going to take comments on the call. We need to. Okay, so let me just tell you where we're headed with this. We're going to talk about uh, melanin, concentration of melanin in different internal organs and the effect of when that melanin goes bad or when different things are, are, are that happen that impact the melanin. Um, and then after that, that the, the main contributor to these bad things that happen to melanin are drugs, drugs that are put into the black community, and there's been a lot of documentation of this. But from that, we'll transition into African holistic health and uh, versus European, not with European or American, uh, modern medicine and how we're doped up on drugs and different things like that. So that's kind of where we're headed. And then after that, we'll get into dietary laws and things things to support our melanin. So let us pray. Father Yah, thank you for your set-apart spirit and your holy Shabbat. Thank you for today's message. We ask that you bless all who heard the message and that we all take this knowledge and are able to apply it to be more like you. We were created in your image. Um, we pray for freedom from different situations, we pray for peace, we pray for an increase in knowledge of who we are. All these things we ask in your son's name, how are you? How are you? Closing song? Okay, no closing song. Not much more time to decide The prophets have all prophesied We only have a few more miles to go The news says it's all going wrong news that I've known all along We only have a few more miles to go Despite the confusion I see The promises he gave are my guarantee